Hey guys, so let's talk about keeping our LifePro batteries warm in the winter. I've got a shed slash workshop. That's where my batteries are. This thing is totally off grid and I need these batteries to power my workshop, including the lights we're using right now in order to do work, right? But we also know that LifePro batteries can't get below freezing if you wanna charge them. So it's important that if you're in an environment or in a place where the temperature is gonna drop below freezing and your batteries could potentially get exposed to that temperature, that you wanna keep them above freezing in order to be able to charge them. If they do drop below freezing, just as a side note, it's not the end of the world, they'll be fine. But if you charge them while they're below freezing, you could permanently damage them. You actually can discharge them if they're above freezing, um, but I think it's down to around zero degrees or maybe 10 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm not exactly sure on the top of my head. But again, I just wouldn't wanna use my batteries if they're below freezing at all, if, if there's any danger. So how am I gonna do this? Well, what I've been reading online, what a lot of people are doing, are they using these plant heating mats, right? So this is a heating mat. Uh, you plug it in, it's just gonna generate heat. It only uses about 18 watts of power, uh, which is a stupendously small amount of energy. So they're very efficient. Uh, and this one that I bought comes with this. This allows me to control the temperature. So basically I can tell this when to turn on and it'll try to maintain the temperature that I'm giving it. It has a heat sensor, so it can test the, it can sort of evaluate the ambient air temperature and try to generate enough heat until eventually this temperature sensor says, okay, we've hit that heat target. So this is programmable. It's actually programmable down to 40 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, which is probably what, like three degrees Celsius, something like that, uh, which is kind of good. It'd be great if it could maintain 35 degrees Fahrenheit, but I just couldn't find one that went that low. Uh, but I want something that's programmable. Obviously, I don't want it running all the time if it's a really warm day and it gets to be 60 degrees in here. I don't want this going off. But over the winter, you know, when it's really cold, I do want something that's going to kick in when it's around 35 degrees or 40 degrees just to make sure that my batteries are never getting too cold. So when that, you know, morning comes and it can, my, my solar array is absorbing a lot of energy, my batteries aren't going to be shut off because my BMS low temperature protects that, hey, it's too cold for the batteries. Okay, so this is what I bought. Uh, they're really cheap on Amazon, uh, around, I think, 20 bucks, maybe a little less. I'll put an affiliate link below. Um, but yeah, here, I'm gonna go install it and let's talk about why I'm doing it the way I'm doing it. Okay, so let's talk about installing these heat mats. Hey, so I'm not a genius uh, and I filmed incorrectly, but I don't wanna undo everything I already did. So just as a note, before you start, make sure to remove your watch, uh, any other jewelry you have and use some glasses and use gloves whenever you're dealing with electricity. Okay, and now I'll let earlier version of Will uh, get back to the video where maybe you can see his face. Okay. So let's talk about the mats first. These are the mats, as I mentioned. If you're doing an 8S or 16S LifePo setup, these are almost perfect, right? Look at how well they fit. These are 280 amp hour Eve LifePo cells. Uh, these are pretty much the standard. Uh, if you get Leishin or whatever, they're all very, very similar. And if you're doing 8S setup, the mat is almost the perfect size. So originally I was thinking I would take these mats and I would put the cells on top of them. Then I decided that might not be the best idea. These cells are really, really heavy. And these mats are designed to basically heat seedlings and plants. So my thinking was that that was just too much weight. And I was, you know, risking crushing these, either breaking them or perhaps causing a short circuit or something like that. So I figured the easiest way was actually just to put them on its side like this. If I take these on the side and tape them, then they're going to be, you know, basically on the side of the cells. Obviously one side of the cells is going to be warmer than the other, but I'll place the, um, I'll place the temperature sensor in the middle of the cells and I'll place my BMS uh, temperature sensor temperature sensor towards the back. So that should make sure that the BMS is never gonna activate uh, based on just the heat from this, uh, which is good. And also ensure that, you know, if I put the temperature sensor from this towards the back uh, in the middle of the cells, it'll make sure that, you know, the whole cell is getting heated up. But I imagine the sort of thermal diffusion through the cell should be enough that if I heat one side, as long as the heat's not too great and this doesn't generate a huge amount of heat, again, it's only using 18 watts, that should transfer to the other side of the cells. So I, A, I, I'm only going to be targeting 40 degrees Fahrenheit with this, so I'm not going to be heating the cells up a great deal. Uh, and B, they just don't generate that much heat, so I really don't anticipate having an issue where I'm overheating the cells or just heating one side of them. So let's get started. First things first, it comes with a little sucker thing. Uh, I'm not using that. I'm just finding it's not sticking great to the batteries. Um, I don't want to insulate this too much because I don't, I don't want this to, I want this to feel the actual ambient temperature. But at the same time, I am a little worried that it's going to potentially cause a short. So I'm going to take a long piece of tape, cut it like that. And then I'll take another piece of tape and do kind of a cross. So the top of this should hopefully uh, just be totally protected from accidentally shorting anything while the bottom of this is actually gonna be coming in direct contact with the cells, okay? Because this is a long metal temperature sensor and it'd be a shame if that were to 
uh, connect two of your bus bars together and cause a short. So I'll take this now and I will install it. And just be very careful that that's not touching any of your bus bars. Okay, second thing, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna plug this in. Uh, before I plug it in, this cable is actually pretty long and uh, your mat's gonna be connecting this further. So you'll have about, honestly, almost 10 feet of wire length. You can see this is plugged in. I set it to 40 already, but the set is really easy. If you wanna, saying the ambient temperature is about 65, which honestly is off by a fair amount, but uh, we'll see what happens. It's continuing to drop. But if you wanna change the uh, setting mode, you just hold this, hold the set button, it's gonna flash. Now you can go up or down, whatever you want. Then hit set again, you're done. So this temperature uh, sensor is actually doing a good job. It's slowly coming down. I guess it got heated up probably in my hands when I was touching it. Okay, so that's done. So now I'm gonna install this and then I'll connect that directly to the temperature sensor. So the way I'm gonna install this is really, really straightforward. I'm gonna put it here and I'm gonna tape it in. Is this the best method? Probably not. Is it gonna work just fine? Absolutely. I think you should do what's right for you. I'm just thinking that it doesn't make a lot of sense to place it under the cells. Cause again, I think it could crush it, probably break it. These things are from China and they're not expensive, but also could potentially cause a short. And the last thing you want is some sort of short fire under your battery cells. So we'll take a piece of tape. Okay, so that's almost, we're almost done. Last thing to do will be to connect this to, which is actually now at the right ambient temperature, about 52 degrees in here, kind of a cold day. It's gonna get colder though. Connect the heating pad, the plug from the heating pad directly into the plug for the sensor. You can say, uh, you also, you can see that there's a heating light that's not on. So this is not gonna be activated right now, but we can test it by just changing that temperature. So if we do set and hold it, we'll go up to 53 degrees. See if it kicks in, let's go 54 just to be careful. And heating clicked on. Now this is generating heat. Okay, and I'll find a way to set that. Uh, is this the best system ever? As I said, no, uh, but I think this looks gonna work just fine. I think if you built a case and used insulation, this would be even better. Um, but overall, I like this. For one, uh, I'm planning on doing some changes in the near future, so I can just take this out really quickly. If I need to put it back, I can also put it back really quickly. Uh, it's gonna be stable. It's easy enough for me to get in there, check on their cells. Also, what's cool is that the heat from here will also go up, so hopefully maybe uh, these, these will be pretty heated well, so these are the ones that I'm really worried about. Uh, I could also just put a layer of insulation here, but again, there's so many ways for air to get in, I don't think it'll make a huge difference. Um, so I hope this is helpful to you. These things are really cheap. And I think if you're going to have your cells, uh, maybe in a shed or any, or a garage or any area where they can get cold, the right thing to do would be just to use these mats and see how they go. Uh, the cost is really low and, uh, there's really not too much danger as long as you're not crushing the mats. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, good luck. And please let me know if you have any questions in the book, uh, in, uh, in the comments below. Otherwise, please like this video. I really appreciate it.